If cosine theta is equal to negative 3 fourths and theta is in quadrant 3, then sine theta is equivalent to... So to understand this, or to be able to answer this question, we have to be familiar with our understanding of the unit circle and how sine and cosine plays uh, a role in the unit circle. So sine and cosine are the x and y coordinates, sorry, are the y and x coordinates, got that backwards, right? Because cosine represents x and sine represents y. And we can generate all the coordinates on the circle as a function of the angle. So in other words, when theta is equal to zero, when we're on the x-axis here, the x and y coordinates are one comma zero. When theta is equal to 90, we're at zero comma one. When theta is at 180, we're at negative one comma zero. When theta is at 270, we're at uh, zero comma negative one and so forth, right? So, uh, and then, so if we look at this, if we break up the unit circle into quadrants, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, we can see, I'm gonna use a different color now and make this slightly thicker, that the uh, in the first quadrant, the X and Y coordinates are going to be positive and positive. If we look at the second quadrant, the x and y coordinates are going to be negative and positive. Third quadrant is going to be negative and negative. Fourth quadrant, it will be positive and negative. Whoops. Since cosine theta is equal to negative 3 fourths, cosine will be negative in two quadrants only. It will be, it will be negative in quadrants 2 and 3. The problem also says that uh, theta is located in quadrant 3, so that's consistent with our understanding. The question now is asking, uh, then sine theta is equivalent to what value? So, in order for us to understand this, okay, we have to understand that whatever value that we get at the end, sine theta will have to be what sine? Sine theta would have to be negative in the third quadrant. So, to find out what sine theta is, I'm going to use red once again. We're going to use the Pythagorean identity. Because, because sine and cosine here are on the unit circle, we also recognize that if we drop a line down, we end up with a right triangle here. So what we can do is we can say the height of this triangle is sine of theta, because that's the y coordinate and the x coordinate or is going to be the length or the other length of the other leg is cosine theta so then i can say sine square theta plus cosine square theta is equal to one so i know what cosine theta is it's three fourths negative three fourths so i can say sine square theta plus negative three fourths squared is equal to 1. I can now solve for sine squared theta. So sine squared theta plus 9 sixteenths is equal to 1. Subtract both sides by 9 sixteenths. I get sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 9 sixteenths. Create a common denominator. 16 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths. That would be 7 sixteenths is equal to sine square theta. Let's take the square root of both sides. We end up with sine theta will equal to plus or minus square root of 7 sixteenths. But didn't we also, didn't I also establish a moment ago that sine theta will be negative in the third quadrant? I did, right? So sine theta as a result will be negative square root of 7 sixteenths. And since 16 is a perfect square, we can then conclude that sine theta is equal to negative square root of 7 over 4. So this is our answer. And that would be option 1.